Yep, 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 people. What up, what up? The much anticipated Kenyan beauty story starts now, right now. Klimumbos. Eh? To meanza kuzungumisha story. Yamurembo. This story, let me take these headphones off. 1994, 1994 begins on a very, you know, it was my final year in A-Levels. I'm at Makere High School. So we had the exams in May. Yeah, it was May. With the anticipation that I'm going to Makere University. It has an animal in a book. You know, I, I had been so much familiar with my career for almost six years. Coaching during my O levels and staying in Mitchell Hall during my A levels. Before I moved to Chikoni Hostel. So there was a little bit of short-sightedness there you know Makere High School is in Wandegea Makere University is in Wandegea so Wandegs was my place uh-huh we finished our final exams in the first week of May so May vacation wise June July you know the results come back there was a very big scandal with our results they were held by UNEB. Our results didn't come back or whatever was going on and all that. So I got caught up in that maze. I got caught up With the results I had, I could not do the course I wanted. At Makere University, I wanted to do I wanted to do law, faculty of law. Kakati, they were giving me mass communication. Back in the day, those BA courses were undermined. Buzz underwriting and And I felt like I'd let myself down. I could have gone via private sponsorship and paid my way. But with all the shenanigans that were going on during my vacation and all that. The decision is made by my mom that I go and study in Kenya. Kakati Kamabuli Chine Chitu. E Chintu Chak Kenya Chajabwe Chiti. Maharishi International University put out a spreadsheet in the papers. New vision. It was a new university, I think, wanting to expand into Uganda. Tanzania and across the region. So when I saw that newspaper advert, I brought it home. Then we talked about it with my mom. They had organized a conference, like a presentation about the school at Silver Springs Hotel. Mm -hmm. So I plan to go there. The way of what they're talking about, blah 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 blah, what opportunities. And then during that workshop, they were taking applications. At the to be money to universities, scout students. And then, uh, but the tuition fees was very very expensive. I'm nagging a bumper, a G four bumper form zang as it does. Um, all the details they wanted, PO box, whatever that they would write back to me. So that was around July, August period. Hey, because I remember when they wrote back to me, I received the letter, and within two weeks, I was whisked off to Kenya. That is how I end up going to Kenya. And then, uh, 
If you read the story, My Maiden Voyage to Nairobi, 1994, there was a lot of anxiety about me going. Maybe I will, because change. Change is a very difficult thing to, to sink in. It's like my maiden voyage to Europe, I call it maiden. When a I had last been to Kenya when I was a kid. During the 1979 Liberation War. We left Uganda to go in exile in Kenya. So the memories were a bit distant, you know, it took about 15 years later. Now you have age, you know, you know, you know, you're seeing the world differently. Kakati, once I accept the, the admission to the university, I begin shopping. Everything, you know, telling people, not so many people knew about my going to Kenya. It was sudden, it was just sudden. But of, of course my mom had made that decision that I should go and study in Kenya. For my higher education university. So, I was a bit on the edge, you know, I didn't know what was coming. I didn't know what... <laughs> it was a tough one there. And my recollection, it is the 13th September, 1994, when we left Uganda. And uh, I think it was the Akamba bus. We took the Akamba bus. You know the bus, Akamba, the Winton Road. Hey, what I remember about that journey, I did not sleep until we got to Nairobi. Bus yava a Uganda, yavanga somewhere and now could do it on. Amidst a lot of excitement, people always queued around Ginger Road, Spear House. Hey, about to yavanga yavaba waving it about to bus. It was, I think, kind of like a ritual. We are against the Nairobi, against. It was looked forward to. People, uh, in 1994, things were different. At even Babuli Airport, we were not going to be able to get the waving, Oksibula, Abantuwa, we were not going to be able to get the waving. That is my maiden voyage to Europe, 2000. I want us to get this picture perfect. So, the bus sets off. Akamba bus. Bulu, 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 Namao, Joro, Lugazi, Mukono, Mabira Forest. I was familiar with Ginger Road because I had went to school in Muiri. The school is along Ginger Road. You get to Ginger, then Magamaga, Maga, Magamaga. So we pass Muiri. I see the hill, my former school in Olevo. Ah, it continues. Paka Busia, go border until Busia the border. We cross into Kenya. The bus continues to Kisumu. We stop over in Kisumu for dinner. It was around Zaringa Sawa. Oronga Zaringa Sawa. Ngasa. I taste my first Kenyan food. I remember it was nyama, ugali, na sukuma wiki. Mnajua hiyo ni chakula ya Kenya? From there, up to Nakuru, non-stop. We stopped over in Nakuru. You know, when you're in another country, you're seeing new things, new smells, new vibes, new culture, people. So as 
sinking in all that. Gangesa ko kulaba bulichimu bulichimu bulichimu. What really really drew me in was the Swahili, because growing up, or Swahili or Rwanda image in Bia Uganda, it was associated with the army. And back then, the army was feared. And uh, hearing people speak Swahili to me was uh, a bit suspicious, you know what I mean? And that is going to come in the story later on the Kenyan beauty. The first thing that drew us together was my interest in learning Swahili. Because I wanted to talk to her. I wanted to speak her language, I wanted to speak with her on the same level. <laughs> you people. Uh -huh. From Nakuru, the bus continues all the way to Nairobi. We arrived in Nairobi around 3, 3 p.m. in the morning. Very bright, lights everywhere. All the buildings are glaring with lights, neon lights everywhere. I was like, wow. So that image, I still have the very image. Also when I landed in the UK here in 2000, on my maiden voyage, we arrived here around 6 p.m., 6.45, but the plane didn't land until around 8 o'clock. It hovered around the sky. It was very snowy, it couldn't land. And then when it landed, that is the image I have, similar to the one I have in Kenya. So, from the Akamba terminal where the bus stops, Lagos Road. Murumanyo Lugudora Lagos Road. Then we, my mom, I was with my mom, remember. Much of, I'm just jumping. Buka, buka. Kwa wangi na nabi wandi kada. I'll, I'm going to compile that story together so that people can read it. It's got all the details in there. You can follow the story and everything, blah, blah, blah. So we book into Ambassador Hotel. Ambassador Hotel in Kenyatta Avenue. So we book in until the morning, until the morning when uh, they come to collect because when we were leaving uganda my mom telephoned the university to tell them that we are leaving because they had given me a date to arrive and the time okay so they were supposed to collect me at wimpy restaurant along kenyatta avenue at midday Nissan Caravan. Guys, remember that Nissan Caravan? Yeah. Remember Harry, one of the TM instructors? So when we left Ambassador Hotel that morning, but my mom was familiar with Kenya because she had also met the Kenya. My mom knew Kenya inside out. She had studied their secretarial studies. They used to be what they called the East African Secretarial Study something something. And oh uh, you know, the East African community be really very interesting. The civil service. All oh, the people who did the administration they had to train by no training. Uh, you went to that college or oh, well, was it an institute or something like that. So she, she was there, and my dad also was familiar with Kenya. They, we had so many friends there, Kenyan friends. So when I saw her walking with me, she was like, you know, showing me the ropes. She knew that building, that is the cinema, that is this, that is this. So I had that comfort with my mom. So when we reached Wimpy Restaurant, that's the first time, I sit in a setting that is more like advanced. Well, I mean, to be here in Uganda, you know, we in Pi restaurant, that I think means that you're comparing a cool cafe Javas. Eh, cafe Javas. Eh, Chocha Bay, no, 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 no,
fast food restaurants. So from there, they pick me up and we go to Sharit Center. Westlands. It was a very, very big shopping mall. Sharit Center. In shopping, I went to all my scholastics and logistics I needed. Right from mattress, beddings, everything. Then that's when they told me that Limuru, where the university is, is a very cold place. And I'm like, in the Bari de Sana, Limuru, Uko Bari de Nyewe. And I was like, cold? Cold. You know, you, you, these things you can't imagine them until you get in that situation. It is the same situation I was in when I arrived in the UK for my very first time. I could not imagine how people would live in this kind of environment. There was snow everywhere. It was the worst storm here since, like, the year they say in 10 years. It was a very, very bad winter, 2000. And, uh, but you know, you make do, you know, you kind of acclimatize and even <laughs> now you're sinking her in. So are we good? I'm bringing you in. So the story, the Kenyan beauty has two benchmarks, the Swahili language and the coldness in Limuru. I'm like, okay, you know, and when we arrived at the university, it was a very brilliantly sunny afternoon around lunchtime. It was after lunch. We were students who were the upper campus. We were dining. We were dining. But later on that afternoon, it began to rain. And then in the evening, that night, it was very, it was very misty. You couldn't even see. And I'm like, okay. But that was in the night. So let's go back to Sharit Center. Hati, Sharit Center, here to Jing, here to Kola Shopping. The, the closest, no, 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 the closest I have of in my imagination of Sharit Center would have been uh, Lugogo, 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 Lugogo. There used to be a show. I forget it. But you have so many shops in one place. And then, okay, today, let's say Garden City. But Garden City, time was 10. You know, 1994, so a very, very big juxtaposition of, of, of situations. And everybody's going about and about shopping, this and that. Things stuck tight, everything in order, everything's. Kenya was ahead. Kenya was ahead. I was like, wow. So I, I got soaked in. It was maybe the high rise. So I was falling in love with Kenya. Did you get me? And that is going to play another role when I meet the Kenyan beauty. So she becomes the mirror image of my imagination that everything is good, everything is beautiful. Ooh, baby, ni murembo. So Kenya becomes the epitome of beauty, physical beauty and emotional beauty. You know, that love, that feeling, that I was falling in love with. <laughs> Akati, we leave Sharit Saint after shopping. That is where I first see trolleys. Everything is stacked on. They've stacked on everything. Everything, everything I needed. They put everything in the van. And then Muhammad, the driver, 
of the van was a Ugandan who had lived in Kenya for many years and uh, he was working at the university. So we clicked first time. Who many is a kegus? How is, you know? I don't find it very hard making friends. And, uh, hey, Mutabani, sign so cool, and then we now Uganda, blah, blah, blah. Talking with my mom and also talking with me. But me, I was more intrigued by a Ugandan now living in Kenya, working in Kenya. What is he missing? He must be missing a lot in Uganda because remember, you are tied down to where you are coming from, where your heart is. My heart is in Uganda. Now look how my heart is melting away in Kenya. So the drive from Nairobi to Limuru was via the old Nakuru Road. But I'm like tense with emotions. I'm tensed with anxiety. What am I going to find there? Already I've pictured this image. Back then there wasn't even social media that you could see pictures of where like you could Google up something and see you could like you know make you know you know what I mean today today is different. You have street view, you have Google Maps, you have this, you have that, you know. So as journeying into the unknown, you know what I mean? So that was a tough one. So with my head out left right i am looking looking we went via the gong gong hills down 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 through the there's a forest in nairobi you drive through it and then ba -ba -ba -ba. we head towards banana there's a small town called banana then there's a road exit going to nazareth hospital du -du 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 -du. kenchik kenchik is signed Limuru girls, so pretty much as now, that area, the surroundings are all covered in tea, tea. Limuru is a tea growing region, and uh, it's very, very green. The landscape, that's what I mean, the landscape. So, we branch off Kenchik, then we begin the drive up Tigoni. So as we drove up, it gets darker. There's so many trees around. And it's a meandering road going all the way. It snakes, it snakes, it snakes. It goes through a forest. Then you see the Moru girls. Then you see Tigon International School. Then you see waterfalls. Eh? And then you turn off. Then the road cascades up. Maharishi School of Management. That's when I arrive. Oh, I arrive in Kenya. Uh, technically, you know, because I was in a place I wasn't familiar with, the unknown. You know, the it, it was as a stranger, a stranger in Limoru, no friends. Now the closest who was going to be my friend who had instantly become my friend. Because when my mom leaves, ah, uh -uh, no, this is it. So when we arrive, the van drives all the way up to the main block. Mm -hmm. I was with Harry and Muhammad. So when I come out with all my luggage, it's put inside the main building, upstairs. But you can upstairs, there used to be a small office upstairs. And uh, lunch was finishing, so Harry tells me to come downstairs. Eh, you can have some lunch. The first time I'm going to very nice food, very nice food they used to cook at the university. So I'm testing. So I met my first friends there. I remember Dalib. I met uh, Lynx was there, Lynx, Jerry. Those used to stay back in the dining, so we kind of they welcomed me so but i was i was coming out as well three ugandan students girls ivas dusabe dorothe bakashawa ruhanga 
and Anne Karimba, we are coming out as well, walking down to the girls' section. So they said hi to me. I was with, with my mom. So in that moment, Dorothy talks to my mom. Dorothy, she's, she's, a, she's a very, very beautiful girl, you know. And, you know, she talks very sweet, very, very nice and all that. So my, she made a very good impression on my mom. And uh, later on, my mom would comment as she left, so I was like, is my mom setting me up here or, I, you know, okay. So Dorothy stands out when I remember that. And then uh, later on we would become very good friends. Till to date we are friends. She's in, she's in the U.S. She's in the U.S. Washington. So that was my first day in Limuru Tigoni Maharishi University. So because that afternoon, they sent me down to the accommodation wing. And uh, I'm to reside there with a the fellow student. We would be sharing the same, uh, the same cubicle or whatever you call it, same room. Uh, Kanyu Muhaura was his name. Very quiet guy. I haven't heard from him. And then uh, in our wing, I remember there was uh, Tom. There was, uh, I forget the names, there was a guy called Moses, uh, you know, many names. So then that even, uh -huh. so that afternoon, I go upstairs to do my induction. Then I did not go for lectures. Then they, we used to practice transcendental meditation every evening. So I'm taken upstairs to kind of be talked through everything that goes on and blah, blah, blah. So that evening, we have dinner. So that's when all the students come up to the dining hall. And uh, they, they, were, they were very happy to see me and there was this eagerly awaited student. I think they had talked about me, that there's a Ugandan student who's coming tomorrow. Usually, Mr. Karuyuki, rest in peace. Yeah, Mr. Karuyuki was the principal. Yes. So, during dinner time, all the students, the Kenyan students, we had students from Malawi, students from Somalia, students from Tanzania, from Uganda, Kenya, of course, we had students from, uh, you know, far and wide, far and wide, you know, so many students. And uh, I, I came across as very confident and very astute, you know, uh, you know, Sijali, Sijali, Uni Muganda, Uni Muganda, blah, blah, blah. So, that evening, there is a football match. There used to be a football ground across the university and uh, I went to play football that day and that is the name they give me the name the, the student who gave me that name is called uh, is it Prashant? Yeah Prashant Asian student Indian student he gave me that name Prashant I think I'll remember that name because she is going to come in the story. Uh, Patrick Omode. Omode means today in Kikuyu. Omode. I played football on the very day I came. So, Prishant calls me Patrick who played football today. So the name Patrick today translated as Patrick Omode. You see what I mean? So this is the Kikuyu now I'm going to learn when my encounter with the Kenyan beauty happens. So 
This is the preface, part one. We have ten parts. Are you with me? So my first day in, in Kenya is serenaded by love, beauty, intrigue as well. You know, I, I was intrigued. I was taken in. I was sucked in. Limuru is a very, very beautiful place. But it was also a very lonely place. Because most of the time, the weekends, the students left campus. Those who had family near in Kenya, in Nairobi. And I used to remain there alone. More or less on campus. I mean, of course, other things were taking place. The staff members were there in and out and about. But me, as a student, I was... I didn't have any people in Kenya that I could go to just like that. But later on, that is going to play in my hands. So when I meet the Kenyan beauty, she, I think she, she took up that void, that space, that emptiness. You know, attraction can come from many things. You can be drawn into Oh, you're, 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 you're in the university today alone. Let's go for a walk. I used to go for walks. So many things are coming in the story, people. Because of the record, Musuze. Ku campus. Yalina Avali Bamuagala, Gabam Gezako, but not Kenya at Nabungaba, man. Number families above Vam, Ninga Abagana. Oh, Mom of Wukanga, Vam Familia Kinyata. Oh, it has Gula Kolu Taro, man, Osijali, Osijali, you know. He must pay the Koya Noma. Eh? Nancy Gula called Talba later on, he saw Yachidaba. Yachidaba. So, those who went to Maharishi University, they, of course, this is a retold story. I'm telling what happened, what happened during my time there. They couldn't have seen it happening, but they could have suspected a lot of things. Yes. Zengabanetila mataga fraska, amata, baine farm mumuki kuyu wali mbanetila mere. It it I was swept in. I don't know. Muge na kunyume rainbow zelo. Ama wuli le. Hmm. Kenya ya nyumira. Because when two opposites attract, it's hail. You know, that kind of energy. You know. I remember one night, I had to escort her back and walk back to campus in the pitch dark. That place could get so dark at night because it's patched up in the hills. Lots of trees everywhere. Now I'm like, she had to go back home. We had time quarters. I think we were watching TV in uh, the entertainment room. And then when we looked outside, it was already dark. And I had to escort her back. It's quite a long walk up. I will not tell you where she was staying. Because you will know. <laughs> well, she was staying in Limuru. In Tigoni. But I will not tell you what she was saying. You will know. So, that pretty much is the beginning of everything. How it all went down. And the encounter with her was accidental but she had heard of me 
a Ugandan student, you know, many students used to come, they used to admit students all the time. Because when I joined, I joined towards the beginning of the second semester, and the second semester had gone into like one month. So my intake first year, I joined like a late student. I was a late student. So they would have, you know, what would have gone out, what had gone out. And I remember the day, it was one afternoon after, 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 after lectures. I'm walking down from the main block, the main building, towards the gate. And she saw me, she was walking up. You get me? She was walking up the hill. She used to come to the university because she had friends there. Are you with me? Uh-huh. And uh, of course, for the obvious reasons, I politely stopped. You know, you, you see somebody beautiful, you know, you, you, know, you stop, innit? And then I said, hello, good evening. Do you know that traditional greeting? You know, and she was like, Ali, Ali, she was, Ali Shanga, you know, she was shocked, you know. This doesn't come across. Okay. Usually, you know what I mean? How are you? I'm fine. Uh, my name is Patrick. I'm a new student here. And, oh, I heard about you. I said, you heard about me? So, that really draws you in more. And then uh, the rest is history. So, we have a 10-part series. Are you with me? We are going to to talk about this love story that pretty much opens my life and her life. Because if I hadn't left Kenya, eh? that's 1994, but that is going to come towards the end of the story. You get me? But she was to make my experience as a student in Kenya amazing. And the things we shared together. <laughs> uh, was I her first love? I don't know. That's a tough one. We shall see. Eh? <laughs> it's going to be interesting. And how everything came across. The things people saw and the people were left wondering. Because most of the students couldn't believe. They said, What did you tell this girl? But it all went back to the innocent things. It's her eagerness to teach me Swahili or my curiosity. It's two things, isn't it? Two things. That's a love story. So, guys, let's call it a day. So, this is part one of the story of the Kenya beauty. It's a love story retold. I wrote this story already. My maiden voyage to Kenya, 1994, and from Maharishi with the love, Mapenzi Yenye, where there are two stories. Two stories, you got me? So, but I'm going to compile these two stories together. Those, they are, they, I have people who like to read. They like to just sit down and read, you know. Avid readers, avid, you know, like, you, you have that deep interest into something. And those who can listen in, like now we are doing this, you just 
put it on play and pause and whatever and, and just listen in and listen to my voice talking. So, what time do we got people here? Uh, we're gonna make a move and then uh, you have a nice one people. You got me.